Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about groundwater. Groundwater is water that comes from the ground. It's a source of drinking water and also helps grow our food, as it's a major source of water for irrigating crops. Groundwater is also very important in industrial processes and is a source of recharge for lakes, rivers, and wetlands. You're probably familiar with surface water, the water that you can see in streams, rivers, and lakes, but did you also know that there's a whole lot of water under the ground that you can't see? Well, there is. 98% of Earth's available fresh water is groundwater. Everywhere on Earth, beneath hills, mountains, plains, and even deserts, it's the water that's found underground in the cracks and spaces in soil, sand, and rock. Groundwater supplies are replenished or recharged by rain and snowmelt that seeps down into the cracks and crevices beneath the land's surface. Let's just take a couple minutes to review the water cycle, or the hydrologic cycle, which begins with the evaporation of water from the surface of the ocean. As moist air is lifted, it cools and water vapor condenses to form clouds. Moisture is transported around the globe until it returns to the surface as precipitation, like rain or snow. Some of this water may evaporate back into the atmosphere. Some may empty into lakes, rivers, and streams as surface runoff. And about 10 to 20% of the precipitation that falls to the earth seeps through the surface to replenish our groundwater supply. Impervious surfaces, such as pavement, can reduce the rate of groundwater recharge and limit our water supply. Groundwater is essential to keep our rivers and taps flowing. It moves very slowly, sometimes as little as inches per year, through geologic formations called aquifers. Aquifers are typically made of gravel, sand, sandstone, or fractured rock, like limestone. Water can move through these materials because they have large connected spaces, called pores, that make them permeable. To better explain how groundwater moves and why it's so important to us, I'm going to use a scientific model of a groundwater system. Models are a fun and interactive way to learn more about the world around us, especially when you're trying to describe something that you can't see like groundwater, or something that's really tiny, like atoms or cells. First, let me give you a quick tour of this model so we know our way around. It represents a thin slice of the earth, filled with sand and rock and clay, just like the ground beneath our feet. Water is allowed to slowly flow through the model, much like groundwater flows through an aquifer. There are tubes in the model that represent wells. We can draw water out of these, much like pumping water out of a private well in a home. There's even an area in the model which represents surface water, such as a lake or a river. Water is allowed to drain out of the model so that it represents a real aquifer with continuous flow. You can even make it rain by pouring water through the top of the model. Now that we've made it rain, it's easier to see the water table. The water table is the level below which the ground is completely saturated with water. The water table may be located only a foot below the ground surface, or it can sit hundreds of feet down. All of the water below the water table is groundwater. If the aquifer is shallow enough and permeable enough to allow water to move through it at a fast enough rate, then people can drill wells into it and withdraw water. Here in our watershed, four out of five residents rely on groundwater and their private wells for drinking water. Even if you don't have a private well at home, you still rely on groundwater every single day. In fact, Americans use almost 80 billion with a B gallons of groundwater every single day for things like drinking water, irrigation, livestock, manufacturing, mining, thermoelectric power, and other purposes. Unlike surface water collected in rivers and lakes, 
groundwater is often clean and ready to drink. This is because the soil actually filters the water. The soil can hold on to pollutants, such as living organisms like bacteria, harmful chemicals, and minerals, and only let the clean water through. But groundwater can contain many different elements that are not filtered out by the ground and that we don't want in our drinking water. Some are naturally occurring, like arsenic, and some are human-made substances. I'll talk more about this in the next video in this series. In any case, it's wise to have your well water tested for contaminants. Well, that's it for this video, and I hope you join us for the next one. And in the meantime, you can be a groundwater protector by using groundwater wisely, by not wasting it, and also keeping it safe from contamination. Before the next video, I want you to do some digging and find out where your water comes from. Do you get it from a public water supply? Or does your water come from a private well? I'd also like you to give some thought to ways that you can protect groundwater. Thanks for listening and hope you can join us next time.